broadcasting live inside the Whitey's Ice Cream Factory. Now, though, News 8's Angie Sharp takes us behind the counter. One of the stores that she has breakfast with, one of the owners. Hi there, Angie. Good morning, John, and good morning, everyone. I told you, I promised you that we would be having ice cream for breakfast this morning, so here it is. This is Cup of Joe, and it is delicious. I'm joined by John Toonberg, the co-owner of Whitey's Ice Cream. I'm going to let you talk just for a little bit while I enjoy this. So, <laughs> how many flavors do you have? What are your most popular flavors? What's the least popular flavor? Well, our, our stores generally carry 36 flavors. Mm -hmm. A larger store like this can have like with a drive through window mm -hmm. uh, have extra cabinet we carry up to 40 flavors mm -hmm. so it's there's plenty of choices and you have some that are kind of on rotation that come in during the springtime right, right. yeah like this spring we came out with our lemon custard mm -hmm. the banana the banana gram which is very oh, popular yeah. banana gram and of course in the fall there's the pumpkin the pumpkin of course <laughs> people start calling our office in august saying how soon's pumpkin coming up <laughs> and we're not ones to rush the season but right. um yeah, every year it seems to get a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's answer. We had a lot of viewer questions, so I want to make sure there we get go. to those. The one that's probably one of the most popular is, are you going to expand outside of the Midwest? <laughs> what is your answer to that, John? Well, over the course of time, we've received a lot of requests for franchises, and we've always said no to that. We've actually had a few people in the Quad Cities say, don't ever franchise because then you won't belong to us oh, anymore, okay. which is very sweet, yeah. very nice. What, what's the reason why you don't franchise, though? Um, Oh, there's numerous. We don't mm -hmm. like being sued, and all, all, all the time, <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, you know, franchisees, mm -hmm. franchisees are fran uh, yeah. suing the franchisor. But um, it's just not for us. You at least keep it hasn't local. been at this time. Keep it local. Mm -hmm. uh, not that we're big control freaks, but we do like to control how things are going out of our store. And so, yeah. uh, owning all of the stores ourselves mm -hmm. seems to be the way to go. You guys have um, have expanded in the last year, though, to Eldridge, Eldridge Iowa. Eldridge up in Eldridge uh, has been very successful. Yeah. Um, uh, the the people out there appear to love it, and Eldridge is growing, mm -hmm. as we it all is. know. It's it's a bustling community, and mm -hmm. so we appreciate that. Any new flavors coming out? Somebody requested pistachio. We yesterday on Good Morning Coast, we were talking about pizza ice cream. What well, do, what are your about feelings about these kind of stranger flavors? Actually, uh, that's not us. <laughs> I actually had a, a reporter from the New York Times call about ice cream a couple of years ago, and I said, well, we're never going to make a tomato basil or whatever. She says, that's what I'm talking about. These these fun and funky flavors come out in the yeah. summer, but uh, You're just like, no. we'll, we'll let others do that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys stick to the we'll good stick stuff, with right? things like butter pecan. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Lastly, somebody asked, um, why don't you make an ice cream for our military? And you actually have done that, haven't we you? Have. Yeah. We have. If you want me to show, we Absolutely. have Sergeant Camo ice cream. And this started oh, maybe five or six yeah. years ago, but we give all the profits away to military veterans uh, organizations. So yep. it, it was a fun project to work on. Mm -hmm. We actually have the Sergeant Camo name trademarked, and we actually have Camo ice cream trademarked, but we don't bother to <laughs> tell people they can't make camouflage ice cream. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, well, more with John Toonberg in just a little bit. Also, I'm going to have him teach me how to make something here, and I'm guessing it's a lot harder than it looks. So we'll be right back with that at the end of the show, John. Good luck to you. Angie, thank you very much. Get ready to tune in to a special Facebook Live as well with Whitey's happening right after Good Morning Quad Cities on the WQAD News 8 Facebook page. And next week, we're having breakfast with Davenport Mayor Frank Klipsch. We'll be at Greatest Grains off Harrison Street in the city's Hilltop Campus Village. It all starts at 5 a.m. All right, so to come right here on Good Morning Quad Cities, Pothole Oh No, where residents are dealing with all of those potholes and why that problem hasn't been fixed in two years, Eric. Although it kind of looks like maybe a couple of the roads around here, but I'm not saying which town. I'm not going to say that. Also, we're keeping an eye on some uh, thunderstorms out there not too far away. I'll let you know when they work into our forecasts as we lead the way with accurate weather coverage for the next eight days. It's 642. Glad to have you here this morning. You're watching WQAD. This is News 8's Good Morning Quad Cities.